Hello ladies and gentlemen, Nick here and welcome to my ranking of Doctor Who Season 10 stories. So I'll be ranking all five stories from Doctor Who's 10th season. And this has been a really great season. I had a really good time with it. Apart from the first couple of episodes of Spearhead, from, not Spearhead, please, Frontier in Space. Apart from the first couple of episodes of that and maybe the first episode of Planet of the Daleks. Um, but that, that, that was more enjoyable than any of the first three episodes of Frontier, even if it was a bit slow in some places, but in quite a few places. But so yeah, here's the season 10 rankings. Um, I'll just list the top stories. The Three Doctors, Carnival of Monsters, Frontier in Space, Planet of the Daleks, and The Green Death. So, without further ado, here's my ranking, starting off course with number 5. Now, despite kind of going up in my opinion, I think this story does still... Half of it just is just teeth gritting, annoying, frustrating, and I can't take it. But the other half, first, uh, first the next bit is a bit... Oh, filler, but it's still enjoyable filler, and then you've got some really good stuff later on. This is Frontier in Space. Yeah, I just, I can't get into the first two episodes. I just, the first three episodes, I mean. I just, just so teeth gritting. It wouldn't be too bad if maybe, just, uh, towards the end of episode two, start, throughout episode three, they say, um, maybe, maybe they are saying some truth. Maybe if they, uh, had considerations of, Maybe they're telling the truth. I think there might have been one or two cases, but then they would imme immediately then go, mm, maybe not. Um, maybe they are spies, traitors. So it just was annoying to me, and they had to go to the Lunar Penal Colony, which did some world building, but yeah, it just still didn't work. It felt like a distraction. It felt like we were moving away from the story when we should have been move carrying on it. Ah, but then the master turned up and stuff started to get better. And then part four, after the master took the doctor away from the, the colony, uh, we kind of got a bit of filler with him, with them in the ship, in the master spaceship, and just going around until they were captured by the Draconians. Then started things started moving on again, and then part five came along and things got better, a lot, a lot more better. And then six was also a, was a really good way to end the story. But from that, you can tell that's already I've got a mixed, I've got mixed feelings on this story. I gave it a seven, but that was more so that because the second half of the story was had some really great stuff in it. It's just that that first half, ugh, I can't stand. I I would, I wouldn't mind if I had to rewatch this story again. I honestly wouldn't mind skipping to part four and starting from there. I would skip half the story, maybe skip that first couple, those first couple scenes as well. But we know we can't ever do that. We can't. We can't do that. We have to watch the stories in full. <sighs> so Frontier in Space is another one I wouldn't mind not watching again. But if I was to watch it again, I'd prefer that second half. So there we go. Number four. This is the story that has changed my opinion the most. Before doing these rewatches, re this was actually number one. But after rewatching it and after rewatching the other stories of the season. It went down quite a bit. It went down to third, and then I rewatched the other another story. Uh, it was the penultimate story. And then I rewatched the last story. So when it went, it went down from first to third, and then down to fourth. Uh, so yeah, so this one's probably had the most significant change out of any story on a season ranking. This is Planet of the Daleks. Now I still really like this story, but again, I think the first couple of episodes. Just are a bit slow, a bit can drag a little bit, but they're still pretty good and still pretty interesting. So still so much better than Frontier in Space. I'm not gritting my teeth at it. I'm just a bit dull, uh, just a little bit dull, a little bit bored, uh, bored, but still pretty interested. Still got some good stuff going on. Still got some in interesting moments. So it's not all bad. It's got, I mean, the dullness is more. It's more interesting than some of the other duller episodes that take forever. Um get through and then about halfway through it picks up again so that's pretty cool and we get more time with the supreme dalek in this story than we did with the daleks in frontier in space mm -hmm. and it's it's still a fun good fun interesting story i think it's wrapped up a bit too quickly and i would say the same for frontier in space but that had to lead into this story this one i think uh could have slowed down the ending a little bit um but nevertheless plans of the daleks is a is a good story in its own merits. I do have to say, with both stories together, trying with Larry Letts and Terry, Terrence Six, they wanted to make a 12-part Dalek, Dalek epic to 
rival the Dalek's master plan, and they did the two, these two six parts and just made them tie into each other as some one continuous uh, story. And I have to say, with their attempts to make a epic 12 parter to rival Dalek's master plan, in my opinion, they failed in making a story that rivaled Dalek's master plan because Frontier in Space's first three episodes were shit. Next episode wasn't so great, but it was still fun. And then the last two, they were good, but they can't fix the overall problem. And Plants of the Dalek starts out a little bit slow, a little bit dull in places. Gets better a lot, over, gets better, but overall it's gone down a bit, in my opinion. And overall, both stories together, they don't quite work as much as uh, Dalek's Master Plan. Whilst Dalek's Plan, Master Plan, with the exception of the Feast of Steve, Steve in episode 7, uh, all of the sto all, epi all of the ep episodes worked with each other super well to tell an epic single 12 part story i think maybe that that not to say that having two six parts and making one 12 part overall uh connected 12 parter doesn't work i think that i think it was working okay it's just that the stories themselves uh, one of the stories uh wasn't very good overall and the other could have been better as well and whilst master plan is a bit of a masterpiece minus that one episode it was just that one episode that kind of in fact, even without that episode, it's still a master. Even with that episode, it's still a masterpiece. And the prologue episode that doesn't really count. Um, and like I said, all of the episodes besides Feast of Stephen, they work really well together to make this story. And even with Feast of Stephen, there, it's a little bit of a oh, a time out breather uh, to get away from the story just for an episode, just to have a little bit of a break. Even if it doesn't really contribute to anything, and it's not really that great of a break anyway. But it's, even that, it, it still contributes a nice little break to the story and you've also got Mission to the Unknown which again not that great but I, I'd probably put it above Feast of Stephen um, to be honest but overall not so great but it's still a nice little it's a nice little prologue to how the story what the story is going to be and a nice little unofficial episode zero so yeah so overall I would say the Daleks Master Plan certainly is the definitive 12 part Dalek epic and Frontier Space Planet the Daleks has Best as they tried, they just couldn't live up to it. So, overall, and, and that's mainly due to Frontier in Space being half shit, half uh, great, and Planet of the Daleks starting out good and getting better along as it goes along, but still not quite reaching the same levels as Master Plan. So, you know, so going back to what I said before my explanation, Terran Sticks, Barry Letts, they failed in making a Dalek epic that to rival Master Plan. Or at least beating it. They they cannot beat Master Plan. This this their twelve parts epic just wasn't as good, and yeah, I think Master Plan only had one bad episode. Uh, this one had three bad episodes and some of, and at least two or three other weaker ones. Um. So yeah, and Master Plan. That's just concluding Mission to the Unknown. Um. By the way, so yeah, so there you go. So that's my little explanation of why Terran Sticks and Barry Letts couldn't, uh, well, Frontier in Space and Planet of the Dalek's wasn't as great as a 12-part 12, 12 epic as Master Plan. So, Master Plan all the way. Okay, moving on to number three, moving away from the Dalek epic, uh, which is a real shame, really, because Plan Planet of the Daleks was originally number one, and it was my favourite John Pertwee Dalek story, but now I think it might have to be Day of the Daleks. Um, I think I still prefer Planet to Death, which will be next season. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, okay, so number three. Number three is a fun, enjoyable, and very politically heavy story. The Green Death. Not to mention extremely environmental warning uh, stuff, but, you know, it's still got some really good and fun stuff, and it's got some nice little... Uh, B movie sci fi in, in, thrown into this environmental warning story and um, with the goo, the waste goo, and the making people very ill and turning maggots giant, and even having a giant fly at one point. It's got some really great stuff. We also have some very emotional bits towards the end with Joe and Joe leaving, and it's got some good stuff. And that was built up throughout the episode. There was some uh, that stuff does feel pretty rewarding as with the character of cliff jones professor cliff jones and their interactions with each other and boss is a really fun and enjoyable villain and has some he has some great stuff and the guy who voices him oh he's so into the role i just 
I just really enjoy it. And we've got some great unit stuff, and I'm glad to see Mike Yates back after his noticeable uh, non-appearance in The Three Doctors and no other unit stories in between. Uh, yeah, like Season 9, there is no... The units appear at the start and the end of the season, but don't appear in any of the other episodes. Season, season 11 will feature them in three episodes, although the... Uh, the first one, but again, they will miss out the second half of the story. Um, second three quarters. Uh, so certainly in the first episode, I think they missed the other three episodes. Then they're in the next story, and then they're in the last story. And then they'll start off Tom Baker's first season, and second season, and be in another story in that one. And then most of Tom Baker's one is in space. And the next time we'll see a, a member of UNIT, or UNIT itself, will be five uh, Mordrin Undead. In 20 but we've still got some unit stories to go before then um so we've got some great stuff in the green death and yeah it's still fun and even the pol political stuff it makes a lot of sense and it works really well so that's that story okay number two number two is basically what we would consider filler if it was a new who story and it, yeah it does kind of bit feel a bit more of a filler story considering you've got a 12 part epic and uh, well, two, two, uh, two six-part epics merged to become a 12 and a emotional farewell finale at the end. But considering this is better than all of those, it's 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 got some dodgy effects, don't get me wrong, but there's still lots of fun to be had. And this is Carnivore of Monsters. Yeah, I just had a great time with this story. I mean, maybe some people won't take to it. Maybe they'll find it too campy or silly or something but i personally had a great time with it i thought it was a great fun story a little bit of filler distraction from overall but it was a fun one to get back into time and space after the doctor was redeemed by the time lords and we get introduced to the drashics who doesn't love the drashics well okay who doesn't love drashic from five who fans but these are the guys he came he was the figure uh that was but oh, that figure was a figure of one of the drashics from this uh, story, so the Drashigs are in this story, and without the Drashigs, you wouldn't have Drashig, the, the action figure, and you wouldn't have Drashig, the Five Who fans, and it's never Omega character, and I'm sure his popularity have inspired Big Finish to include include the Drashigs in the recent Fourth Doctor audio that came out earlier this year, so, I mean, they might have just done it out of their own accord, but I'm sure Drashig, uh, from Five Who fans, the popularity of his character maybe inspired them. I mean, Benji Clifford, who's a friend of Billy Tracy, who created that character, may have put the idea forward. I don't know if he had any involvement with the fourth Doctor stories, but he probably had some sort, may have made the suggestion. Possibly, I don't know. But I wouldn't be surprised if Dra the Drashigs being in the fourth Doctor's audio story from earlier this year were due, was due to the popularity of Drashig from Five Who fans. And Drashig would not have appeared if the Drashigs were not in this episode, in this story. And and on top of that, it's still really fun, really enjoyable, and really great. And you also get the only appearance of a Cyberman in the John Pertwee era, though the Doctor does not meet uh, it. So it's worth just having that few seconds. Uh, and another cameo from the Ogrons, although no Dalek appearance in this one. And even the guys holding, hosting the... Uh, Carnival of Monsters are fun and enjoyable. The only thing I will say is that the grey-skinned, bald, uh, bald aliens aren't that really great to watch, and their whole plan, whole revolution subplot, and all this, uh, well, supposed attempts to world building, uh, doesn't quite fit. But you know what? It still works. Uh, well, the story does, and not so much the uh, aliens and their world building, but the story still works, and it's still got some really entertaining stuff. But number one is a story that just ticks all the right boxes, apart from having a, a, a bit of a rushed ending. But other than that, it ticks all the boxes. And number one is The Three Doctors. Now, looking on the Wikipedia page of this story, the critical re reception of this story was probably the worst received. This is probably the worst critically received of the story story of the season, most of the reviews were pretty negative or had some negative points. Whilst the other stories, there, yeah, some of them would have some negative points, but were generally a bit more positive than this story. So, to me, this feels a bit like The Rings of Akaten, where uh, there is more negative reception to a pretty great story, at least in my opinion. I think Rings of Akaten 
Rakuten, it, Rings of Rakuten is a great story. That's a Series 7 one, by the way. Uh, or Season 33. And to quote Mr. Tardis Reviews, did the Rings of Akaten come in and steal your homework? So this kind of, so the rece critical reception in the, written up in the Wikipedia article of this story reminds me of the general recep reception to Rings of Akaten and people just hating it for, uh, I, I don't even know why. Why would they hate that story? Why would they hate this story? Did, this, did the Three Doctors do something to those critics and people who receive uh, writing about the story, I don't know, but I think certainly from the fact that this is a popular one amongst fans, maybe it's not a heavily praised like Spearhead, Inferno or Damons, but I do think it is a popular one amongst fans. So yeah, Three Doctors, lots of fun, great interactions between the second and third Doctors and also some great first Doctor scenes, great uh, chemistry with Joe, some great stuff with Benton, uh, apparently Jamie was supposed to turn up, but Fraser Hines was unavailable at the time, so most of his stuff was given to Benton, which, in res to, in respect for Benton, probably helps give him more of a role in the story, gives him a bit more of a role in the story. Yes, it does feel confusing that the second Doctor hasn't got a companion with him, same for the first Doctor come to mention it, but you know what, not having Jamie here does, is a bit of a uh, advantage for Benton. There's also no Mikey Hates for some reason. Maybe he was already, uh, he'd already gotten in as a, a inside man for Global Chemicals by this point. And he was working on that, but I don't know. Um, but yeah, we do have Mr. Ollis and Prof Dr. Tyler, not Professor Tyler, Dr. Tyler. They're doing some great stuff in this story and they help us a lot along with the Brigadier, Benton, Joe and the two Doctors. And we also get some fun scenes with the Time Lord, well not fun scenes, but some good scenes with the Time Lords, and Stephen Fawn Form is, well remember what I was talking about, the guy playing Boss, how he was so into the role, Stephen Fawn is probably, uh, I think he gets super into his roles, he was Azal, he will be Eldrad, and he, and here he is uh, as Omega, and he's super into his role, especially Omega, he is so into it, and you can get, you can sympathise with the character, but you also f kind of fear him, fear him as well, and you realise he is going a bit too far, and you, he's got to be stopped. But you can understand where he's coming from. He has some sympathy in, amongst amongst him, and he just has some great stuff. And I was going about about to mention to get Jones. Okay, those things were shit. Uh, what the fuck? Uh, okay, the uh, the antimatter creature at the start and its visual effects looking it looks a bit pretty poor. Uh, but I can forgive it that the gel glob thing is looking like rub uh, rubbery jelly with a giant claw. What the fuck? <laughs> what, what, what were they for? Uh, you didn't need them. I mean, I think the, work, the most they did was attack unit, but besides then guard the Doctor and Joe and company in, but uh, I don't know. In, in Arc Infinity, he, Omega only has this one other creature helping him, some sort of alien bird thing. Uh, not the same as Kronos, a diff an actual birdie creature uh, helping him. Uh, that doesn't exactly look very much better either. But um, I don't know. Maybe just maybe Omega is just poor at coming up with an uh, creatures uh, servants. Mm. So yeah, but most of, but besides a couple of nitpicks and some issues. Three Doctors is a really fun, really enjoyable, and great way to start off Season 10. And if it had been closer to the 10th anniversary uh, date, it would have been a great 10th anniversary special, I suppose. But that's not it. But it is a great 10th anniversary story. A story that would have celebrated 10 years of the show, even though it's closer to the 9th anniversary. And Time Warrior was the closest to the 10th. But you know what? Uh, but it's still a really great way to start the season and had some great stuff and just really fun, really great way to celebrate 10 years and it kicks off the season with a bang and it's so good. So, I mean, it's not perfect, um, not, 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 ter not, uh, not completely perfect, but it does tick off a lot of great boxes and, you know, with Plants of the Daleks going, dropping from first place to fourth place, ah, uh, well, first, third, and then later fourth after reopening the Green Death, but dropping from first to fourth place overall. Um, so, because, especially after that, 
then Three Doctors manages to secure the first place spot and is easily the best episode, best story of the season. I did love, I did really enjoy the uh, Carnival Death. I thought Green Death was great. Planet of the Daleks was really good. Um, just sadly, it dropped a bit from my positioning. And whilst I hated the first couple of episodes of Frontier in Space, it did end on a better note. But for me, Three Doctors is just amazing. Uh, well, no, it's not amazing, but it's great. It's the best story of the season, and it's just great. Uh, I'm not going to gush all over it like I would with the Daemons or uh, Spearhead or Inferno, maybe. Uh, okay, with those two, it was more objectively rather than subjectively. But I'm not going to gush over this story like I did with Inf Daemons or maybe even Day of the Dark. I think I would gush over it as much as Day of the Daleks. Um, oh, yeah. So that's season 10, and I'll just re uh, you know, my ranking again, number 5 was Frontier in Space, number 4 was Planet of the Daleks, number 3 was The Green Death, number 2 was Carnival Monsters, and number 1 was The Three Doctors. Brilliant way to kickstart the season, and a great 10th anniversary story, despite being the complete opposite side of the year to the anniversary itself. So that's it from my Season 10 ranking. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time for the start of Season 11, with the story that is closer to the 10th anniversary uh date itself than the three doctors was for time warrior i'll see you guys then goodbye Don't forget to click below to subscribe to the official Nicholas Payne Retro YouTube channel. <laughs> they, I will say, uh, in. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, noticeable, unappearing, non appearing. And uh, coming up to. No and this is, um, uh, then again, it's Frontier in Space, it doesn't, doesn't, okay, maybe I, now, maybe I can understand why, okay, maybe some people have got a point about, uh, sometimes stories not being that great, but, uh, stories they don't like and everybody, ah, screw this bit, screw that bit, cut that bit, cut it after Damon's, it'll, 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 it's a great end to this, it, it's, uh, probably the best story of the season,